Hey, Jay, welcome to the Valley. Uh, I was wondering how long you've been practicing with the team and what your impressions of the team have been thus far uh, working with the group. Well, I mean, um, it's been great for, 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 for me, obviously, to come up here with a new group uh, because these guys are just full of energy, full of energy, wanting to work, uh, happy to be back uh, working, uh, getting prepared for this season. So it's been great for me uh, to, to be with the guys and um, to try to get our commodity together and, and, and going, going forward uh, into this preseason. So it's been great. Next up, we have Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, and he'll be followed by Brendan Clean. Uh, yes, Jay, I asked Amani a couple of days ago about you in practice, and he said that he couldn't comment on the situation at that at that point. So I'm asking you today, uh, is that because you tested for the COVID or injury or, or what's going on? Just personal problem. I had some stuff to handle personally that I need to take care of, and um, it took me a while just to uh, get that behind me. But I had some stuff to handle, and um, I'm thankful for my coaching staff and the whole organization for uh, – working with me with that and, and being patient with that, but I have some stuff to take care of. And now that it's behind me, I'm looking forward to moving forward. Just wanted to follow follow that up. Uh, how are you, was today your first practice? Uh, today was a, was pretty much my first one, yeah, pretty much. <laughs> how, how'd it feel? How, how'd it feel to be out there? Because obviously when they bring you in, they're thinking, hey, you're going to be an integral part of this team. I mean, it felt great, you know, just to, just to get the um, response I got from the guys is just amazing. Just, just me. Uh, just my presence uplifting the group and seeing smiling faces. Uh, for me, it was a great day. Um, uh, hopefully for my teammates can say the same, but obviously it's been a short off season for myself. So um, I'm just trying to get my body into the best shape uh, to get ready for another 72 game season. So um, it started today for myself. Next up, we have Brendan Clean with Bright Side of the Sun and he'll be followed by Gerald Bourget. Hey, Jay, welcome to town. Um, aside from the personal issue, and, I, and I'm sorry to hear that, that you had to deal with, with whatever that was, but just when you do think about being in the finals not too long ago, um, it's obviously something nobody's ever really dealt with. So for you physically and just getting ready for another season mentally, what's, what's that feeling like for you right now, and, and how different does it feel? It feels very different. I'd be lying to say if it didn't, uh, because the turnaround is – the, the quickest turnaround I've ever been a part of in my eight years being professional. So that's a little, it's a little different. Um, mentally, I got to get back engaged. And obviously with being, you step into the arena, you step into practice, we step in between those lines, everything started to click. So obviously once you get the news that, that we're going to start here early, uh, our first game is the 22nd, first preseason game is this week. So um, it's just like mentally, you got to get back into the swing of things for myself. Obviously, it was a big letdown for me not not hoisting that trophy and and and, and getting being a champion, um, but that motivated me. That's, that's to continue to drive me uh, during my offseason workouts. Obviously, I wanted a little bit more more break, uh, but that's the way that's the times we're living in right now. And I have to I'm having to adjust, and I will adjust, and I'm steady adjusting each and every day. And with a new group of guys, it's, it's, it's obviously you have to um, adjust even quicker. So um, I'm locked in mentally. It took me a little minute to get. Uh, where I need to be mentally, but I am here and I'm ready to move forward and get ready for the season. And then if I could follow up on that, you mentioned the, the new group of guys. I know this is a really competitive group that James and has put together here. That's been one of the things that they've targeted. Have there been guys already asking you about the postseason run you just were on or, or trying to trying to hear from you what it's been like to be on so many successful teams throughout the years? Yeah, uh, that was one of the topics, obviously, just uh, the younger guys asking how I felt just how it felt just to be, uh, to play at that level, to play at that, that height of, of basketball with that, with, the, with what's on the line. So uh, obviously uh, that'll, that'll probably be not be a conversation for us uh, to talk about here and there throughout the season. Obviously I could take uh, from experience, been in the playoffs each and every year, except one year I've been a professional. I can take that experience and just help our guys and try to prepare us. And not it only, it's not going to happen overnight, but it happens every day in practice. And that rolls over into the games. And from games you went, you start to win games. And from there you, you land in the playoffs. So it's just a, it's a progress. And I just want the guys to know that it's, it can't help. It can't happen overnight. The media is going to say what they want to say. We are supposed to be in the playoffs this year, blah, 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 but we have to put in work and it happens every day. And I just, that's my message to them. Um, once you get to that point in the playoffs, the rest of it, it, it take care of itself if you put the work in. So just, just sending that message along just every day, we got to make the days count. And um, that's what I've been trying to preach from day one. All right, Jay, next up, we have Gerald Bourget with Fansided. He'll be followed by Tressa Tudrick. 
Hey, Jay, welcome to Phoenix. Um, obviously, you talked about how truncated this offseason has been. You were just in the finals, you know, like two months ago. But on top of that, you had to deal with free agency. I'm just curious what that process was like for you and what ultimately kind of allured you to Phoenix. Um, the, well, the process was chaotic. <laughs> um, 14 teams call, 14 teams through a, through a contract. And I just had to sit back and just really absorb it all in. Um, we all know I've been traded a few times. So once the trade deadline hit, it's no coincidence that every team and half the team in the league calls and try to get me to play for them. Um, I guess that's a good thing. That, 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 that speaks good to my work. Obviously, I want to, to, to continue to grow as a player, but 14 teams called this offseason. And I was just able to just sit back and just try to envision myself. And once I got a phone call from um, Chris, Chris and, and Devin, um, those guys made a strong pitch. Um, and I felt like, um, Devin is ready for real pressure. When I say real pressure, that's playoff basketball. That's paying for it all. And I feel like he's uh, definitely put the work in to be respected in this league. I have the utmost respect for him as a player. Obviously, Chris Paul, is, his, his, his resume speaks for itself, and I respect that too. Uh, but, but I just know Devin is ready for um, some real basketball, some pressure basketball. And I just want to do my part and help him get to achieve that. And then hopefully one day uh, play for it all. So I just envisioned myself once I got that phone call from those guys. I had a few teams. Obviously, I had dwindled it down to a few teams. And I was just able to make the decision just solely off of uh, me envisioning myself and me wanting to help, me wanting to help an organization uh, who get to the, get to play and play and playoff basketball again who hasn't been there in the last 10 years. So uh, obviously, the mountain is, is huge for us. Uh, but I, I'm, I'm not – any, um, any way, shape, or form, shying away from the work that needs to be put in uh, to get to us back to where we need to be, and that's playoff basketball and playing for it all. So um, it was very chaotic to, to answer that question during during that time, which I knew it was going to be, uh, with given the times I, how many times I've been traded and how many phone calls I uh, GMs have taken on my behalf come trade deadline. So I knew it was going to be chaotic. That's a blessing in disguise. I'm very thankful uh, for other teams even – uh, giving me the opportunity because someday, uh, one day that, that phone call is not going to come. The, the, the phone is not going to ring as much. So I'm very thankful uh, to be in that, be in this position to just to be a uh, hot commodity and want, want it. And um, I was able to, I feel like, make the best decision for myself. Next up, we have Tressa Tudrick with Channel 3, Channel 5. She'll be followed by Dwayne Rankin. Hey Jay, welcome to Phoenix. Uh, glad to have you here. I just wanted to ask, kind of piggybacking off of that question because you pretty much answered it, but how settled are you in the Valley? Have you kind of put some roots down? Have you found any places you like to eat or just kind of how situated are you in Phoenix um, outside of the basketball realm? I'm very situated. Um, um, I found a place. Um, I'm very comfortable right now. That's, that's good. My family's comfortable. Uh, I, haven't been to, I haven't been out in the public because I've been trying to just train and get ready for this season. And, handle my personal issues and um, and for I brought my own chef so I don't have to eat out as much as uh, a normal player would or a younger player would but um, I, I just I'm very acclimated I have a very scenic view uh, in my house and I'm very thankful for that and I'm very amazed by that I didn't know it was that beautiful here especially when in the nighttime or, or uh, sunset so uh, I'm very acclimated and I'm, I'm very happy to be here and I'm, uh, my family's comfortable I am comfortable and I'm ready to get going. Next up, we have Dwayne Rankin with the Arizona Republic, and he'll be followed by Kellen Olson. Yeah, Jay, just 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 with the climate here, with the, with, with with COVID, I just want to just get it clear: you don't have issues with that, right? Just no, just, sir. I'm okay. good. Thank you, sir. And then, secondly, following that up, um, your role. Uh, when you look at what you what, what you brought to other teams, I talked to several guys you played with: uh, Marcus Smart, uh, Ja. Uh, Ty Hero is highly upset. <laughs> like, he's like, my boy is gone. He was mad. He, he called me. He gave me a nasty text message when I, when I made that decision. I figured he did. Uh, he, he wasn't too happy. But he was happy for you, uh, you know, to get this opportunity. So your role, how do you see it evolving here? Because you play so many different roles with so many different teams. Um, I don't know the specific role. I do know um, the role I want to build for myself is just hold myself accountable and hold my teammates accountable each and every day, each and every game, each and every uh, film session. 
I just want to hold myself accountable. And when you're able to hold yourself accountable with the group, you're able to uh, hold each other. You're able to hold your teammates accountable, the man on the left and, and on the right. So I just want to build that trust with my teammates that uh, they know I'm putting in the work. Um, I, I'm putting in the time that I need to do to help, help, because we all got a we all got a job to do. Uh, each individual on this team, uh, from the first man to the last man on the bench, uh, have a job to do. And that's each and every day. And I just want to uh, bring that. That's that's the role I've taken, and it's able to translate into every locker room I've been a part of. Um, I've been able to, thankfully, my teammates in every situation have respected me enough to hear my voice, and I criticize my own self more than I do the next man. So. Uh, I don't point fingers. I do try to help my teammates. I do try to help myself. And I take criticism probably the best as anybody. I, I've been dogged uh, in the media. And I, and I love that because it actually uh, brings out the best in each and every person, each and every individual, each and every player. So it should bring out the best in each and every person. Uh, so I just want that's the role I have. Whatever coach have for me, uh, whatever role he has for me, obviously I'll be thankful for that uh, and abide by that. But uh for, for what I set out for myself is just be a leader, be a leader each and every day. Hold yourself accountable, hold these guys accountable, um, and show them, show them the ropes and how to work, and, and the rest will take care of itself. Coach said that um, he likes Marquette guys. Mm -hmm. so can you explain what a Marquette guy is? A Marquette guy is first a winner, a hard worker, um, someone who's making the days count. Not everybody can play at Marquette, I'm going to be honest with you. Especially me during the time of our, when it was in the Big East, very a very tough Big East and a very crazy coach by the name of Buzz Williams pushing you each and every day. I saw a lot of guys quit. I saw a lot of guys quit and um, transfer school. That's the easy way out. Um, respect respectfully, that's the easy way out. I, I thought in my eyes, and I just wanted to go through that. I wanted to go through that um, gauntlet of just hard work each and every day. And once I saw it pay off. Oh, I was I was all I was all aboard. Once I saw the, the work being put in, it's paying off for myself and my team. I was I was ten feet in. Um, I was all aboard and just just a market guy, a winner, a hard worker, someone holding themselves accountable uh, each and every day. And, and 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 I feel like that translates into coaches loving you. Thanks, 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 Jay. Good luck this year. Thank you so much, Dwayne. All right. Next up, we have Kellen Olson with Arizona Sports, followed by Greg Moore. Hey, Jay, you're a guy who brings a lot of value to the team, regardless of if your three-point shot is falling or not. But, man, in Miami, it was it was hitting. Uh, the numbers went way up. W was there anything specific that you changed? Can you tell us any tweaks that you made and what you're looking to obviously carry over that success to Phoenix now? Well, you know, just it was just as simple as just uh, we had a we had a soak. We had a stay call, let it fly. Obviously, you see how Duncan Robinson played though, on that end. You see, just see how the flow of the offense uh, – uh, goals in Miami. It's just a flow type offense. And um, once my teammates, once my coaching staff, first of all, gave me the confidence to just whatever shot I felt like um, is a good shot. They trusted me in, in believing that I could take that shot. And not uh, not every situation I've been in has been that way. You know, some sometimes coaches frown upon my shot selection and that, that may translate into me second guessing myself, uh, and which may translate into me uh, going on the drop, shooting drop. But I can honestly say Coach Spo did a great job, and I'm thankful for him um, and, and giving me the the whole playing field of just, we trust you. You are a player. We trust your body of work. Uh, whatever shot you, you, you choose to shoot, shoot it with confidence. And I just, I feel like that played a factor in, obviously, uh, the playoff run that I had shooting the ball. So um, mechanically nothing. Um, mechanically nothing. I Obviously, I watched a lot of film on my shot, but um, I spend a lot of hours in the gym and just working on my stuff and come game time, just trusting it, trusting the work that I put in and, and letting it fly. All right, final three questions for Jay. We're going to get started with Greg Moore with the Arizona Republic, followed by Jesse Zaragoza. Thank you. Jay, good to meet you. Greg Moore, columnist, Arizona Republic. Uh, lived in Milwaukee for a year and had the distinction of being at Marquette a lot, but not covering the basketball team. Um, I often write about things that hit at the intersection of sports and race and politics and sort of, you know, where, where things kind of come together. The question I'd like to ask you just in meeting you for the first time, what is your leadership style? Are you lead by example? Are you vocal? Does it go back and forth? I'd just like to know more about your leadership style. And thank you. Welcome to the Valley. Thank you so much. Uh, my leadership style is, is the second one. I, I want to um, I want to lead by example first. And then, and then, and then, vocally, obviously, that 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 trails behind. 
I can't really tell a younger guy to do this and do that if I'm not doing it. That's how I feel. That's what I feel. That's my lead, that's that's my leadership quality that I feel. And that goes back to when I was a quarterback in high school. Um, I had to know where everybody was at, and that helped me um, help my teammates. That helped me be prepared for the moment, be prepared for uh, that game or whatever the situation is. And I just feel like um, I just got to hold myself accountable first and and do do the things hard and, and go through drills hard just to show uh, a younger player or someone looking up to me how, to, how it's done and how it's done properly. That's what I took from coming into the league, playing behind Sean Marion, uh, seeing Dirk Nowinski work, seeing Vince Carter work. Those guys really helped me by just showing me first. Then I go ask a question. Then they explain to me what's going on. But that's the approach that I take. I just want to lead by example first. And obviously, vocally, I will uh, if I will vocalize what I feel like needs to be done or what, what needs to be uh, done on the court. So that's, that's my approach to my leadership qualities. I don't know if it's right. It, it has worked. Um, and it has been frowned upon. So I just try to balance it out and just try to do what I do. And hopefully the locker room, my teammates uh, respect it. All right, final two questions come from Jesse Zaragoza with Back Sports Page, followed by Christo Saltis. Hey, Jay, how's it going? So my question is, this being your third team in the last year and a half, uh, the common denominator of each team has been the young, talented players around you. How have you taken that role of being the vet that players uh, have turned to? And uh, has Udonis Haslam helped you with that during your time in Miami? Yeah, um, I've just taken that role just because, like I said, I came in the league and I was playing behind some Hall of Famers. I was playing behind Vince Carter, Sean Marion, Dirk Nowinski. Those guys really just um, molded me into being a professional all around, on and off the court. They showed me what it took to not only just be a basketball player, but be a professional basketball player. Uh, I didn't know that coming out of college. I didn't know how to be a professional basketball player. I knew how to play basketball. I didn't know um, my that my sleep was important. I didn't know what I put in my body was that important. You know, I thought I was going to be young forever, and I just was going to be God, godly gifted to uh, still eat snack at any time of the night and be energized for the next day. So that 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 came with time. Obviously, that came with uh, older guys helping me. And you done it still still to this day. I'm I'm still a looked at as a vet in this league, but Udonis was someone I asked questions, uh, for, I asked questions to uh, my time in Miami, just how, how things are done and uh, what's expected. And um, his leadership quality, is, is it's no coincidence that he he got, to know, he got another contract with those guys just to be that, that vocal point in the locker room because he, he's so um, helpful and, and in a lot of different situations that a coach may not can relate to, uh, to the players. So, um, I embraced that role. Um, I, I've embraced it from helping Ja last year. The, and those guys really just latched on under me, bring them to my house for dinner, show them that this is stuff we should be eating the night before the game. Uh, just, you know, just the proper diet and everything. I, I embraced that role because who am I to take that game from those Hall of Famers and just keep it to myself? I want to do the same thing. I want to help the next guy because they, those guys didn't have to help me, but they did help me and they, they helped my career. So I want to do the same thing for each and every young guy I come across. Uh, each and every young guy who on the other team who asked me a question, I don't mind. I don't mind helping because the NBA is a brotherhood and that's what we're here to do. We're just able to help each other um, and just play the best basketball we can play. So I've embraced that role of a uh, big brother for sure. Hey Jay, final question comes from Christos Saltas in, with Sport DNA in Greece. Hello, Jay. Uh, I would like to ask you, uh, how could you describe your connection so far with uh, Devin Booker and Chris Paul on and off the court? And also, you you were one of the guys who helped a lot Bama De Bayo last season, and uh, he signed Supermax extension with the Heat uh, recently. Do you believe that uh, he, not only he deserved, but do you believe that he, do, do you expect it to sign a Supermax contract? At Bayou? Yes, yes. Oh, yeah, for sure. Uh, for sure, I expected that. I expected it obviously a little. Bit, to be honest with you, sooner than when it happened. Um, you know, he's a, he's a he's a talent. He's a heck of a talent in our league. He's that new modern day five man in our league right now who can handle the ball, can take it off the rim and push it, push tempo. Uh, who can make the right pass. Um, it's no coincidence that he won the skills challenge in the All Star game last year uh, because he had that skill set. His skill set is unique. So um, I wasn't. I wasn't surprised at all. I was surprised at how long it took uh, to get the deal done, uh, more so than anything. But um, what was your next question before that? I'm sorry. 
about about your connection with Chris Paul and Devin Booker oh, on yeah. and off the court? Like I said, those those guys were calling my phone during decision time um, during free agency. So um, that definitely made me feel great about my decision afterwards. Um, and those were the first persons I saw when I first got to Arizona. Um, those are the first people I talked to uh, when when my, when my wheels touched down in here in Arizona. And um, obviously that 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 connection and that relationship has to continue to grow um, for our team to grow because. Uh, with us being leaders of this team, with us being older guys on this team, we have to be on the same page at all times. So I'm very, I'm very um, eager to continue to grow our relationship and, and bring DeAndre along uh, as well. We, he, he's a leader on our team and he's a young leader. So uh, we have to bring him along as well and be accountable. So I'm looking forward to it. I'm just looking forward to the growth. Obviously it's early. Uh, so we still have a lot of work to do on and off the court uh, amongst each other, but I'm looking forward to it.